Hey there, welcome to the live stream. My name is John Middick, and if you're brand new to the channel, if you're over on YouTube Live, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. And uh, if you're over on Facebook, welcome. I'd appreciate uh, some type of thumbs up or something like that. That would be awesome. Starting a little late this morning, um, I went to transfer my camera over to my other stand. And the little clamp just decided to break on me. It's happened before. And I've replaced it, but happened again. So I'm not sure why that keeps happening. I don't think there's anything defective with the, the part. Um, it's just they're all made about the same. So it's just an odd thing. So we're continuing on this portrait. And I started noticing a little bit of an issue over here with the curve of uh, the upper eyelid. I wanted to go ahead and correct this morning. So let me start on that. It needs to be angled down just a little bit more than what I've got it. And if you're following along and you're drawing this yourself for the March challenge, uh, then it's one of the things that, you know, I often like to do is just keep going back to um, proportions, line drawing, and looking at the curve, looking at the angles. I should say, really, it's angle right there. And making corrections if, if uh, you need to. All right. So this angles down right there. So I want to look at, hey, good morning, Jan, over on YouTube Live, um, over in the Fine Art Cafe channel. It's good to have you out of here, Jan. So if you um, use a darker pencil to create a dark enough line for yourself, then often you'll want to go back and erase a lot of that line you, that you just put down because you don't want it that dark um, once you start drawing with uh, color on top. Because right now we're just establishing where uh, some of this information is, some of these angles and lines and and uh, establishing uh, the Grizz Eye method here, the value structure underneath. That's what we're trying to do. It's not unlike um, drawing a drawing in graphite. Uh, sticking with one, one color, you know, using this monochromatic approach, and it just simplifies everything makes it so much easier to progress through your piece when you do that. Okay, I like that angle a little bit more. This, um, this angle right here, though, is tapered a little bit more or it needs to be tapered a little bit more over and rotated up this way in my opinion uh, where the pinnacle of the um, upper eyelid is right here and then that once I get that in there then I can look at the upper crease Oh, 
Okay. And that's about as dark as I'll make that right now. Okay. I think I'll leave that alone. I want to look, look at some other areas. We're on Stonehenge paper. We're using warm white. And we're um, still using our burnt sienna uh, color from Polychromos to establish the value structure everywhere. So to <clears throat> so today, uh, this afternoon, we start the live workshop um, working on a Grizz Eye method for a portrait together in uh, um, in the Sharpen Artist Academy. So it's a Zoom workshop taught live, uh, but the video files, everything that we work on, will be maintained and and uh, preserved over there in the Sharpen Arts Academy. Uh, so anyone signs up, they get lifetime access. So I can't wait for that. That's going to be a lot of fun tonight, working on that. <clears throat> and the cool thing about it is I've not even started that drawing. So uh, I love the uh, I love the structure that we're going to use for this. We're going to uh, the sessions are two hours in length, so we're going to work on it, draw on that together, including the layout, the Grizz Eye method, and, uh, and we're going to be pushing ourselves to get that done in four days. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, Shiny, how are you? So, no, I didn't start early today, Shiny. I started a little bit late, actually. Uh, as I was talking about it earlier, that my my uh, clip on, on my camera uh, decided to break. <laughs> Oh, that's okay, Jan. There'll be uh, there'll be others coming out um, that you'll be able to do. I'm sure. Uh, should be a lot of fun. We're what we're actually doing is we're compressing all the information that we go over in the face value ultimate color pencil portrait course. We're doing that and compressing all that information into four days. Two hours every day. And, uh, you know, the structure of the class, uh, some have asked about, will be, um, you know, I will draw and lecture, talk more than I do on these live streams. And uh, uh, I will talk about my process while I'm going through it. Everyone will be on mute while I'm doing that. Um, there'll be a Q&A time towards the end of the class, but we'll have small breaks in between where uh, I will ask for questions on the immediate portion of the lesson that we just covered. 
and then as we um you know get close to being done with the two hours then i'll open it open it up for uh q a as well and uh and we'll address any questions at that time. I'll also be able to look at um, work that uh, students are working on. And uh, we'll be able to give some specific feedback. The cool thing about it is you'll have lifetime access to all the video files once uh, we're done. And we're going to be putting those up every night. If they render every night, they probably should. If not, they'll be there by morning. And so you can review that if you need to the next morning. And you can send me your work, and I'll give you a video critique of what I'm looking at. Uh, so that's something you can work on and try to work towards even after we do the, the uh, workshop is concluded. So I love, I love being able to, to do something like that where we can work on something together. Um, and, you know, rather than, so we're using the reference photo. We're not using a drawing that I drew, uh, which I think is a departure oftentimes from what I've seen in uh, and heard about from other uh, workshops. So uh, I hope that will be helpful. Uh, that's what I've heard is that, People are, are wanting that, and that's what I would want if I were taking a workshop as well. You use a reference, and you emulate what's important about the reference. So not every detail is important. Some are, some aren't. And you have to make some decisions on which details to include and which ones to not include. Some of that just you know, it takes, takes time and experience in doing portraits. And then there is something to be said about personal style and uh, what your preference is to have included and, and to leave out. But those are some of the things that we cover. All right, let me take a look here. So we need more value right in here. Shiny, uh, you're asking, do other tutors get people to copy their already made art, not a photo? Yeah, that that does happen from time to time. Um, you'll take a workshop and you'll recreate what an artist um, has created. There's some benefit and value in doing that because um, if you like someone's art, then you are um, you're learning that technique. You're learning that style and how they did that. It's essentially what people do when they uh, learn from Bob Ross, um, the oil painter uh, that was on PBS for so long. You you learn how to copy um, a copy, you know. But there there comes a point where that's just not going to cut it for a lot of artists, and they, they don't want to do that. They want to learn how to recreate on their own, which. Uh, both of those have, um, you know, pros and cons, right? Uh, I think the cons of just copying what another artist renders uh, is that you, you start to just get used to that. You start to get used to copying all the time rather than um, branching out on your own and recreating or creating rather on your own. Okay. There's a time and place for it. Yeah. Well, right. Shiny. That's exactly my point is if you're watching uh, an artist that you look up to um, draw 
or create or paint or anything, and um, you're watching them do that, if they're using a photo to make decisions and recreate from, then why shouldn't my, I guess my question is, why shouldn't you use that same photo and listen to their choices uh, that, that they made about that particular photo and why they made the decisions that they did. So, um, but anyway, yeah, that's my opinion on that. Like I said, there are, there are pros and cons to each. And I think a, a true beginner uh, or someone just wanting to learn someone's technique very quickly, uh, there's some benefit and value in that. Hey, Oksana. She's over there on YouTube Live. Harry, thanks for joining us over on Facebook Live. You guys will be in the workshop tonight. Yay. I'm so excited. It's going to be fun. Okay. This is the part that, um, you know, I'm going to extend this uh, challenge for those of you that are in member circle. Oksana, I guess you would qualify. Uh, I'm going to extend this challenge into April. Um, there's a lot to be learned by going through the slow process of creating the... Um, uh, just going through this process of creating this grizz eye and then building that up, you know. So, uh, let's see, Cheryl, hey, thanks for joining. Is the workshop in Zoom? Yes, the workshop is in Zoom, Cheryl. So, if you go over to where you signed up for the workshop, I've already I've got a couple of videos for you to watch over there about the materials list uh, and a video about the reference photos and getting that printed. Um, and I've got the reference photos that are downloadable over there. I've got the um, agenda or curriculum, whatever you want to call that. So that you know what to expect. Um And I also have the materials list over there. And I appended that and I put the specific colors that I chose. Um, now, most of you know, I'm not real big on telling people what to do. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> on specific colors. So. so anyway, I hope that'll help. All right. Yes, Oksana, to answer your question, uh, you're asking, do I need to create the drawing? No, do not do not create the drawing. <laughs> uh, so tonight, we're going to do the line drawing together. You're going to watch me do the line drawing, and you're going to watch me make mistakes on the line drawing. And then I'm going to show you how to correct that. Um, so we are going to be using a method for creating the the line drawing and i'm going to go over a few methods on how to get an accurate line drawing um you know it's it, i i can freehand a line drawing and sometimes i'll do that it takes me hours and hours and hours to do that and to modify and correct and all of that um it's it's much easier to work on my freehand skills in a sketchbook or when i'm working on freehand skills if I want something to be accurate, I'm going to use a layout method. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. So Pam, you're asking, have you always used this method? Ah, pretty much, Pam. I've, I've used some modified approaches to a Grizzly method, but um, for the most part, this is what I've done. Yeah. 
So now there are some, um, you know, color swatch booklets that you can purchase where another artist has made an interpretation on what they think are the, you know, what they see as the equivalent uh, colors within, you know, across brands. So across tab, right? Between Luminance, Pablo, Polychromos, Lightfast, um, Prismacolor Premier, that kind of thing. But you have to remember that that is, it may be pretty accurate and you may look at it and say, oh yeah, that's pretty accurate. But it is still one artist's interpretation. Like I may feel like that uh, if I'm using Caput Mortem in Polychromos, then when I uh, don't have that pencil and I only have luminance, what am I going to use? Well, m my opinion on that is I would use Burnt Sienna 50%. I think that one is closer. Or that Arbogene, uh, I can't remember the name of it exactly, Arbogene purplish kind of color, you know. So, let's see here. You guys have a lot of good questions and comments here. Make sure I... Make sure I answered them. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oksana, you're just talking about doing the prep work together. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Love it. Uh, cool. Um, shiny, if you can catch the next one, that would be awesome. All right. Let's see here. Just want to catch up really quick here. So, Harry, you've never tried the Grizz Eye method? So, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That uh, This will be a new venture for you. I love it. Takes a lot of patience. Um, I'll say that. So you just have to put on your patience cap and <laughs> decide, you know, I'm not going to get in a hurry. Um, it's not for the faint of heart. This is a marathon. It's not a, not a sprint. And it's for, uh, you know, you, if you, if you think about it, like, okay, I want to make a portrait that is extremely um, refined and compelling. Okay. As opposed to, I want to get a quick and dirty sketch done. Uh, to me, those are the differences. Like I'm going to take my time and I'm going to refine this and work on it and make it look very representational. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's uh if you're not used to it, then uh just keep that in mind that that uh it's going to take a while. But we've got time. We've got hours. And I'm thinking about doing a spillover sec uh, section or session rather. Um, on maybe Saturday. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see how far we get, you know. I love it that this is, it's going to be very structured and planned out, but it's going to be um, something where I'm, I'm drawing right there along with you rather than uh, me just, you know, doing this and then trying to redo it again, you know. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see here. No, oh, let's see. Oksana, it might be helpful for beginners, but I personally think you're learning so much more by getting there yourself. Oh, yeah, versus a um, prepared Grizzai kit. Yeah, yeah, I'm not real sure about those. Um, I've heard about them, but. Okay. 
shiny. I have tried, uh, I've used other colors besides. So the real key sometimes is, um, you know, gravitating towards opposites. And, uh, sometimes that freaks people out when, you know, when you're, when you're brand new, it's sort of freaky because if you use an opposite color, uh, the appearance of your drawing for a while, it's just going to look really ugly. Okay. All right, let's see here. <clears throat> yeah, Jan, you'll have to join us next time. That'd be awesome. Uh, so, Oksana, you're saying I saw the uh, advertised those Grizz Eye kits on Color Pencil Magazine website. Where all you have to do is put color on top. Yeah, um, I I'm not real familiar with those. I yeah, I really can't comment. I I don't know much about them. Um, so it might be good for uh, for someone that is uh, just wanting to color. I think that would probably be a lot of fun if if that's you know if that's your goal. I guess I don't know enough about them though to comment. Really, I don't really know what they are all about but anyway but yeah what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um demonstrating how you can take a photo that you like and you want to recreate uh and interpret i'll say that okay because we're not actually recreating every little thing about a photo right but we are reinterpreting that photo and making uh, an artwork out of it. And so the method that we're going to be using is this Grizz Eye uh, method. So I want to show you how to interpret uh, what you're looking at and create that for yourself rather than the, the opposition to that is someone giving you uh, this very detailed line drawing. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do all of that yourself. So it should be a lot of fun. Okay. I think I just about um, got that cheek maybe where I want it. I think it'd be fine for right now. Okay. Let me take a look here. See where else we need to go. We'll extend this out just a little bit. I would rather take the time and refine this Grizz Eye method, this monochromatic kind of uh, value structure, scale, whatever you want to call it, underneath than I would and make it as soft and as subtle as possible then I would um, trying to go back and correct things after I've put color on top. So that's something that, uh, that I always want to think about. I, I pay the price if I get in a hurry and I say, okay, I'm done with this. I am wanting to add color. I'm ready to just add color. And so it becomes, you know, it becomes something that, is difficult to correct or rectify problems afterwards. So it's one of those things you pay me now or pay me later. And I'd rather do that work up front, pay me now rather than trying to do it later and trying to erase and rework areas, you know, now, I still may have to do that, but uh, I'm in such a, a better position. I'm in a much more, I've got, more advantages when I work out those values ahead of time than if I try to skip uh, the value portion of the of the drawing in that initial uh, initial uh, grizz eye. Okay. Harry says, do you prefer putting shadows down first and color tones 
on top rather than the other way around. Yeah, yeah, I would rather put in the shadows and then what I call just lengthening uh, the shadows a little bit. So where I've got a dark shadow, like for instance, on the side plane of the nose, I've got a dark shadow right here, right? But this shadow, it extends over. If we look at the reference photo, I think you'll think you'll see that. You know, this the shadow starts right here. It's the darkest right there. I, I would argue it's darker here than it is here. And it's darker here and here than it is right here. Okay. But it extends both this direction and over here on the cheek. So the contour line would say it comes up and over. And it also extends over here to the cheek. It it stops somewhere right in here, right? So there are contours that help to depict what's going on. There's a terminator line somewhere in here. And it's probably like right in here. So there's a little bit of a core shadow starting to happen right in here as well. Um, there's some form shadows right in here. But there's a terminator right here. And what happens is this terminator, it, um, what it, it just means that the light terminates and starts into a shadow. And so it comes across this area and it directly hits the cheek over here. But because of that, you know, I don't want like a, this hard edge right here or hard edge right here. Why? Because there is a form, there's a, a value in between those things because of the, the topographical layout of this, this uh, nose right here and this cheek over here. Slower tapering and slope over here, faster, much quicker over here, right? Okay. Make sure I get this put back over here in the right way so I can see it. All right. Let me see. I just want to check a few things. So, um, Harry, if if what you're meaning by color tones is you're talking about the the exact color uh, that I'm going to use, then yeah, I am normally not not doing that. I'm normally putting in uh, and depicting the shadows first, and then I'm going to go on top with the colors. Now that's the fun part, right? That's very fun coming in here with, with colors. I'd rather just work on the colors all day long. You know, that's a lot of fun. But I've learned to enjoy <laughs> even these parts that some people um, call boring. And, and really is a, um, it's an exercise in, in patience and in um, um, just, resilience and grit and just staying the course and figuring out that, okay, if I work on this long enough and if I pay close attention uh, to these things and uh, early on in the process, then it's going to pay me back later on. Um, and once I started embracing that, then I feel like you know, I benefited from that, or my work has benefited from that. Okay, I feel like that I need, need a little more volume over here. That's a little, little more, a little too narrow right now. So I'm going to push that over just a little bit. Now, if I did that after I had color on top, I could still do it, but um, it would it would take more effort, right? Okay. Now, let me take a look at this. It's one of those things that after I get off the live stream, I'm like, whoa, that's so off. How did I miss that? 
Um, but that's just the way it goes, right? Sometimes. Okay, this value under here. I don't want to lose edges. Sometimes that's important in your um, in your Grizz Eye uh, value structure that you're creating is maintaining uh, a boundary or or an edge, uh, even though you know later on you're not going to honor that edge, but it helps you to create just a boundary mark uh, for yourself. And so one of those is right under here where I have uh, the uh, septum start to connect to the upper part of this mouth, the, what creates the philtrum. Um, when I look at the reference, those are nearly the same value. And so it's very difficult to tell where one ends and the other begins, but in order to um, create that separation so that I know where everything is, whenever I start adding color on top, I'm going to keep it a little bit separate. I just want to darken that value though a little bit more. There we go. Okay. And this value over here, just a little bit more. Okay. All right. I'm going to look back up at the eyes. This area comes down nearly to a point right here. And so I want to take a little bit of that off just to move that up just a little bit. So this skin that surrounds the tear duct under here, move that up just a little bit. And remove some of that value right here around that band around the eye. There's like this imaginary area around the eye that I want to make sure stays a little lighter. Uh, okay, let me see here. So this area right here can always be a little bit darker and sometimes I can get away with making that darker, uh, even if I look at my reference and this area right here is just as dark. Sometimes I can make this slightly darker than that area over here that would represent the band around the eye. Uh, the reason for that is if I'm paying attention to the three-dimensionality of the contours and the forms, uh, then this is often a more recessed area than what's right up here by that protruding area of the eyeball. I'm wondering, let me look at this. I'm wondering if um, thinking I might want to take a little bit of this off on top. I'd rather take more time, like I mentioned earlier, and work on some of these structural things at the beginning here than notice it later on. So I'm going to do this right now while I'm thinking about it. So I always want to think about this distance from here to here, top of top eyelid to the bottom eyelid. I want to think about that distance and what I'm actually seeing in my reference. And that has a lot to do with um, 
the recognizability of the subject. So that really does matter, in my opinion. Okay, then down here. That's actually pretty good right there. So um, taking a little bit more away from certain areas right there, only because, you know, I'm going to come back in there with green, some green colors, and uh, I want to leave room for that on that eye, on the iris part of the eye. Got a little bit of a highlight going on right in here. But we can grab that. We've got a little wrinkle right in there. Let me see if we can make a mark small enough right in there. Now I can push that up just a little bit by adding more value underneath right there. Okay. Take a look at it over here. See what we're looking like. One last thing that I want to do. I'm going to push this over just a little bit. Move that move that line essentially that we have for the tear duct over that way. Just a little. Okay. Now I'll take a look. We'll see what that what that gave us. I don't want this too dark right here because uh, I want to add a different color to that area. I think later on, so we we'll have to often think about that. What color is that eventually going to be? Okay. All right. So this area over here could be so much darker, but I think what I'll do is probably use uh, dark flesh and add a slightly darker tone uh, over there. Um, and so we'll go even darker than what we have it right now. But this was good to uh, just sort of establish this value structure right now. All right. So, you know, we could also extend more of this dark value over here to the middle of the nose. Um, be nothing wrong with that. And that would help us a little bit to sort of model and form the nose a little bit more right here. So that's something that's possible. Okay. All right. Let me look at the lips and then we will call it a morning. 
and we'll, we will see many of you tonight uh, at 5.30 Eastern Time. If you're unsure about the time, just go to um, Time Zone Converter, I think it is, .com, and you get the right time uh, converted for where you are. All right. Let's see. Close enough for right now. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining this morning. And uh, we'll see many of you tonight. Um, if you're working on this challenge, uh, let me know that. That would be exciting. I'd love to see what you're working on. So, And if you're wondering where it is, it's over there in Monthly Sharpener. Uh, you can also get this version, this cropped version that I'm working on right here over in uh, on my website, sharpenedartist.com slash live streams. And it's over there. So, all right. So I will let you all go and we'll see you tonight. All right, we'll see you guys. <laughs>